everybody. Welcome to the Ultimate Swimmer March Madness NCAA Division I Men's Recap Show. I'm Josh Davis, along with Noah Yanchulis, and super excited to join us for this last show. A three-time Olympian, American record holder, captain of Team USA, an ultimate swimmer, ultimate dad, and uh, ultimate husband, uh, Nathan Adrian, now preparing for his fourth Olympics. Welcome to the show, Nathan. Hey, Josh. How are we doing, man? Thanks for having me. Well, it was a barn burner between Texas and Berkeley, and so we'd like to go through each event and get your thoughts and insights because um, it was it was a doozy. And obviously, we love to be there in person, but we can't this year. But I'm so glad at least they had one. And uh, so, Noah, take us through each of the events tonight. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I just want to say, Nathan, thanks for being here. And I know it's pretty cool to have the the Cal alum and the Texas alum here, and we'll kind of talk through the the battle that was on a. Uh, on day four, but we'll start with the mile. Um, Florida, Bobby Fink, again, 412. This is the third time he's gone 412 in the last year and a half, and uh, it's seeming pretty normal, and nobody can come close to him. It's kind of funny watching the race, and you've got this guy, Bobby Fink, winning the race 412, and the second fastest kid in the country, Jake McGahee, is uh, 16 seconds behind, and so it doesn't really seem super impressive for the other guys, but 420, 1428 is still an incredible time. Ross Dant finished third from NC state 1431. And then Brooks fail from Arizona actually finished fourth 1431 as well. And he swam in the morning session. So that was a great f swim for him as well. But yeah, Bobby, Bobby threw down for Florida and uh, a little bit off his record, but still an amazing swim for years. 1430 between 1440 was incredible. And uh, but now Bobby's at 1412, which is unbelievable. Yeah, that was just such a leap. I mean, it, it was crazy. I mean, it was I think I, I would uh, go go out on a limb here and say the most exciting mile that I've ever watched, I think was 2017, uh, where we had like four guys that were under like record pace. And then I think Clark ended up actually winning it. Um, and then he sets the record. And then Bobby comes in and just destroys it. <laughs> no, that was an epic race when all those guys were right around 1430 for that was huge and um but yeah. yeah i think it's such a crazy i was thinking about this and like i think this is sort of like almost like uh townley breaking townley and blake breaking 130 and the 200 free going 129 like to go 1412 that far under uh 1420 that much faster than anyone else i think that's gonna hopefully open the door because right now he is completely alone out there Totally agree. I think there's like this amazing mental aspect of swimming that people haven't given it credit for yet. But those people that break the barriers, man, hats off to them, but they just open the door for for more and more people to come in and, and do incredible things. Yeah, Absolutely. And, one, and one of the themes that emerges through a lot of the races tonight is we hope it translates to these folks at the trials and ultimately Tokyo, because, you know, we, we do need to improve in our middle distance and distance, you know, for USA. And so hopefully Bobby can kind of fill, fill that role for us, you know, which would be pretty cool. Absolutely. But 200 back, baby. It, that was one of the ones I was really looking forward to. Um, five Berkeley guys that were ranked and then several made it into the final. And just Shane was on fire all year long. But we realized Destin is destined for great things, and that race <laughs> did not disappoint. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on, man. I I have been excited to watch a uh, shaved and tapered Destin Lasco since last December, and uh, I mean, just to give you a little uh, background. I mean, we had to just kind of emulate racing, you know, just like any other any other team uh, in in the country during that fall period, um, and he was throwing down some incredible times, whether it was in a speedo in the middle of practice, uh, whether it was suited up when we were trying to create a meet environment. Um, he was, he was doing really impressive things. So I, and I knew that he was still working hard while he was doing it. So I I've been looking forward to, to seeing him do this and man, a freshman going a one thirty five. That's, I mean, wow. 
<laughs> it was crazy. It was so. It was like it, I thought that was the best. The swim of the meet, like just for Shane and Destin to both be under one thirty six, was was insane. I mean, to me, De- the Destin swim is even more impressive as a freshman. Nobody really knew. I mean, obviously we knew he was fast, but nobody really knew he would be that fast. And so, yeah, and it really looked like he had it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the end of that race, but it really looked like he had it until Shane's like maybe last. I don't know, four or five strokes. And he just has those long arms and was able to, to get him on the finish. And man, it was a close race. That was very, that was very grievers esque just cause Shane has <laughs> got some serious size on him and he's got those long, long arms. Yeah. To come back in 24, two at the end of a 200 is fascinating. Most guys dream about that doing that freestyle, but yeah, Shane's last couple strokes did it. Um, and I, and I'm proud of Shane for, for not backing down, you know, because he's had it pretty easy all year, winning his races by by a lot. And uh, it was cool to see them both pu- pu- push each other to that that barrier. And uh, Cal goes two, three, four, big points, um, you know, so to kind of make the in- meet more interesting. But uh, but Texas had two guys in there, too, you know, Carson and and Austin Katz. So I uh, I just think that was a great race. So it was cool. And I, you know, I got to hand it, tell me about the Meffords. You know, I did a clinic for the Meffords 10, 15 years ago when they were little old dudes and <laughs> I stayed at their house. The mom runs the summer league. Miss Mefford is unbelievable swim mom. And, you know, now these guys are huge doing great job and free and back for Berkeley. And it's just really been neat for me to see these guys who were just little bitty at the clinics 15 years ago. And now they're just swimming so fast for Berkeley. It's so fun. Yeah, man, these guys they don't get they don't get enough credit. Bryce is pretty pretty a chill guy, uh, but man, he's he's a guy that has been scoring an A final since his freshman year, and he's still doing it his senior year for us, you know. So he's a great great guy, one of the great leaders on the team uh, this year. So it, it, I hope that he takes advantage of coming back. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's crazy. So can Ryan do that too? Um offer yes he can yeah oh, yeah he, oh he can. My. I, I i don't know i honestly i don't know who's gonna do it it's gonna be hard to keep that guy out of out of the isl though right i mean yeah that's that's true he's, he's yeah too he's valuable <laughs> he's primed for isl so so speaking of hoffer you know he was the favorite in the 100 free and uh just swam beautifully 40.8 daniel and drew tie the texas guys tie for second which is kind of cool too um but then cal Tell us about Bjorn. I mean, Bjorn gets fourth. So just kind of great racing there between Texas and Cal. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're really excited to have Bjorn. Um, he's, he's obviously really good. I, I mean, a lot of times um, foreign athletes take a year, maybe two years to get used to yards. Uh, but Bjorn kind of hit the ground running. Uh, he's obviously he's under 42, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but just kind of a, a note on Hoff. I mean, I, I, it's funny you said you, you called him Ryan. I was like, who? <laughs> Cause we, we, we always call him Hoff. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, you would have never expected, um, him to take off on the field on the, on the second 50. I mean, it, it's really, really interesting just to see how he is kind of wired differently than a lot of, uh a lot of athletes it, and, and Dave had like, has figured him out obviously, uh, and, and to watch like what Dave does to have a Ryan Hoffer come back in a 21-3 versus what he will have me do or what he will have Bjorn do is, is completely different, which I think is really, really cool. Is that, real quick, is that is that mental stuff that Dave does or is that literally like within a practice he'll have he'll have you go a different set versus Bjorn versus Ryan or, or how does that it's work? Different practices, I yeah. Yeah, he, like, I mean, Hoff is, is he's just... He's a, it's his nervous system, man. He's got this <laughs> incredibly powerful nervous system. You, you watch him do a hang clean or whatever. And like, it just looks like he's not trying. And Davis figured out how to kind of tune that into, into, you know, a fast second 50 because he can't like, he's not a guy who can grind out like yards. He, we, he will never <laughs> do, uh, you know, five, two hundreds best average. I, I mean, that would just make him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he's doing, it's working. Yeah, because his last second half in the fifty and his second half in the hundred were just the tops. I mean, he his leg strength, his dolphins, 
everything was just really strong and beautiful. It was it was a great weekend for him. I also want to I want to say something else about and maybe you can uh, you can give some thoughts on this, Nathan. But uh, to me, Ryan Hoffer seems like just and I've never met him. I don't know him at all, obviously. And but when I watch him race, I watch him, his demeanor on deck and in his interviews. He seems like the nicest possible person in college swimming. Like he just touches the wall. There's not really any showboating, but you can tell he's got this like awesome yeah. sense of gratitude. I don't know if I'm getting the right vibes, but that's just how I feel. No, that's that's pretty spot on, man. I mean, <laughs> he is he is an absolute joy uh, to to have in and around the water. Uh, he has this laugh that's so incredibly contagious. Uh, it's, it's, it's like once he, once he really gets going, it's almost like a, a, a cackle, but, uh, you know, all of us know what it's like. And when you can get, when you can get Hoff laughing on deck, uh, everyone else is having a good day too. That's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. I agree with you, Noah. I I like his demeanor too. You know, he's, he's excited, but relaxed before the race and he's great, you know, grateful, but excited for himself and the others after the race. It's really, it's really nice to see. Yeah. Well, just any last insight on the 100 free of what it takes to succeed in that event that you can, you know, any advice you'd give to other young listeners out there to, you know, you've had success in that race and you've watched Hoffer uh-huh. do it. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure out, figure out how to go under 42 because that's what it takes to make the A final these days. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It's so fast. Uh, that's cool. Um, the 200 breast. So kind of interesting, you know, Reese Hugo in the mix, but Max McHugh uh, does his thing. He's just too fast. Dude, I, I mean, it's it's absurd to me uh, because these guys are going out in 52 low. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, I mean, that that was NCAA, like, scratching the door at winning uh, when, I, when I was, like, first getting into NCAA swimming. So yeah. I'm just totally blown away by that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, hats off to, uh, to Max. He, he got it done, uh, an incredible swim. Uh, you know, I'm obviously I'm a Cal guy. I was really hoping Reese was, you know, seeing them go out together. I was like, okay, it's all right. It's all right. You know, Reese, Reese got this second half, second half, but you know, he held on, uh, for the win. And, uh, you know, again, like that, that booted Reese down in one, but Hugo, um, I mean, the real story here, if you're looking at the team competition, he, I think he only made it in eighth place, right? He was in an outside lane um, and he moved up to third. So, uh, you know, he had a little bit of a misstep in that 4 a.m., but here he is, uh, you know, gaining ground for us in the 200 breast. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, any other thoughts about the two breast? Yeah, I thought I just wanted to, to touch on some of the other guys who who had some nice swims. Josh Casper Corbo from Texas, one fifty one four to get fourth, and yeah, uh, yeah I, mean, I think Hugo had a. I mean, that's a huge jump for him, and I think we talked about this before, but like, and Nathan, I'm sure you thought the same. But with that four a.m., it's like, man, if he if he's in that a final, there's a whole different game. But I mean, still a great swim, and then you got Daniel Roy from Stanford getting fifth, probably the shortest NCAA swimmer. And uh, to to go and no disrespect, no disrespect, but one fifty one eight is really really fast for a guy that's I think five six five seven. He's 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 pretty short. That's a great that's a great call out. Yeah, no, it's been fun watching him. He's actually from uh, he he's grew up in the Northwest, so I've, I've been watching keeping my eyes on him for a little while, and I was sad to see him go to go down to Stanford <laughs> instead of come to us. <laughs> that's right. But yeah, and I, I he trained by himself for a period of time too, you know, just him and his coach, kind of like a, you know, a special deal. But yeah, so hats off to him. I love that. Um, and we just want to mention Jake Foster getting 10th and Braden Vines from Texas. They kind of got in there to the console, which was cool. So kind of kept us in the in the ball game because because you know you guys were really doing great in the finals. Berkeley was, and that leads us to the Turner Fly, and I you know. I'm really torn because I, these are two of my favorite guys, Trenton Julian and his parents that I swam with on the USA team. And to see Trenton, his progress these last four years is unbelievable. And then I'm a big fan of Nicholas Albiero and his dad at Louisville. And to see these two guys go at it was really exciting. So I, ultimately, Nicholas touched him out. But, um, but tell, tell us what your thoughts about Trenton are and his progress. Oh, man. I mean, I, Trenton is – in aerobic machine <laughs> uh I, I mean he's he's just an absolute animal um and, and he, he's not only that he's not only talented he has grit um and, and i think that's what that's what the difference maker is for him 
Um, and I, I think that's why you see him improve so much over, over the four years, you know, you come in and you, you get to a place like Cali, you get to a place like Texas. It's like, you gotta be a competitor, man. You, you want to win practices. You gotta, you gotta race really tough guys when you're feeling good, when you're feeling medium and when you're feeling terrible. Uh, and, and Trenton is never a guy to, to back down from a race. So that, that, and that, that has served him well. This race, I honestly, like for me, I was, I was really distracted by the walls, but by, by both of these guys, by both the winners or, or first place and second place, Trenton's walls on the far end were a little bit long. He was gliding into ev- every one of them, but he was really fast once he initiated his actual like turn movement. Um, whereas uh, Nicholas was, he was, you could kind of tell what his plan was after watching the first couple walls. Cause he was getting a whole big old breath in. He was kind of diving down, getting some big, strong dolphin kicks in. It looked like he was really, really, really relaxed. Uh, that first 150, uh, and and obviously his his last 50 is what won it for him. And I just got to say, these dolphin kicks on these guys is tremendous. I mean, they're taking eight to ten kicks off all seven, you know, eight turns, seven turns, and eight walls. I mean, it's fascinating. It is. It is really. I mean, they just like they have learned to turn their brain, uh, like their pain receptors <laughs> in their brain. <laughs> it's uh, it, it is really really incredible. Yeah, I thought it was a. I thought it was a huge swim. When I saw Trenton go out twenty one, my my immediate thought was like, this last fifty is gonna hurt. I'm assuming, and sure enough, it looked like those last couple of strokes was were pretty tough. But I, you got a feel for him as a senior. I mean, you could see his face when he touched the wall and and realized he had had touched second. That just the the disappointment. But at the end of the day, the one thirty eight eight to get second is is still a great swim. And then uh, just to go down real quick, these next three guys uh, we had so five five guys under 140 with uh, Antoni Ivanov from Virginia Tech, and then Luca and Camden, the two Georgia guys. So that was both of their first time under 140 as well. So we had a bunch of guys, uh, you know, break that barrier, which is crazy because like I feel like I remember Phelps went two or 139 in like 2010 or 2009 or something, and it was actually in Maryland. It was at my, the home pool that I train at, and. Uh, yeah and now all these guys are going on under 139 it's like well who's like phelps well who cares you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I, I don't know if you guys have uh have have talked about this in in your other recaps but i mean i am so impressed by by what louisville has done this last year they really they really you know kind of punched above their weight there uh and i want to next time i'm on a i'm on a team with arthur i want to know i want to know what he's doing um, yeah. because he, mm-hmm. you know, he's kind of known for a guy that's, that's pounding a lot of yardage, but they come and they win something like the 200 medley, uh, which means they're, you know, they're mixing in some type of, you know, strength, power, you know, nervous system work, uh, and, and how he balances all of that, um, would, would be interesting to hear. Yeah, I agree with you completely, Nathan. And I got to call their ACC champs a month ago. And so I was kind of getting into the names and the races and, and the team title between NC State and Louisville, and Louisville won, and it was a big deal. And I thought, wow, they're on a roll, and they kept it going at this meet. So it was, uh, yeah, it really is, really is neat to see. Um, and Nicholas, you know, it's just whenever you have a coach dad thing like Nicholas and Arthur and like Trenton and Jeff, it's just really special because that is a very difficult thing to do to be dad and coach. And to have, you know, anyway, so hats off to both those parties, the Julians and the Albieros. Pretty cool. And thankfully, we got the uh, the divers. It was fun. Platform diving. Uh, I'm sorry, Nathan. Y'all don't oh, have the divers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky was texting me last, last night telling me that he was going to start a petition to get diving to score double points. <laughs> I said, no thanks, man. Uh so we had we had two guys score, which kind of gave us another little cushion. Um, you know, Jordan Wendell was fourth, and I think our other diver um, he finished eleventh or tenth. Yeah, so so that helped. But um, Nathan, give us some insight onto the, the y'all's diving program at Berkeley. What, uh... Man, we're we're getting better. Um, we so we actually for a, a long time we didn't have tower. Um, so right. you know, it's, it's tough to, to recruit divers, um, when, when you are having to drive down to Stanford, uh, to practice tower. 
But we got a brand new, beautiful facility um, in, in 2016. It was completed just after the Olympics. Um, man, off a of 10 meter, you have this uncomparable uh, the view of the the Bay Area, um, and and we're we're working hard, man. Um, I, I, we have had divers score for us. Um, we I, I remember I think it was actually at um, I think it might have been at 2019. Uh, our, our diver was one dive away, one one little slip up away from you know getting uh, getting up for us. I think he was he ended up falling back to 16th or something. I don't remember what what the details were, but I mean, an up for Cal and diving, <laughs> you know, like like that's that's a big deal. Um, and, and so we're we're working on it. Yeah. Well, and I'm I'm glad y'all ended on a high note with a really outstanding time in the foreigner free relay. And uh, you've been a part of that relay plenty of times. So I, I think a 246 is really solid and a great way to end. Texas seemed to be pretty safe with their starts and just didn't need to just needed to not DQ, you know. So they were back and forth, uh, fourth place with a 248. But uh, give us give us your thoughts. Uh, or no, read us the what are the splits on that relay? For, for, Cal? for Cal? Yeah, for Cal. Yeah, so Bjorn let off uh, 42-2 which is nice. And then Hoffer 40.86, a little bit faster than he went individually. And then Destin Lasko 41.7 and Hugo 41.7. And uh, I, that's probably what impressed me the most about the relay is that, you know, I don't think of Destin Lasko and Hugo Gonzalez as these, these super sprint guys, but to go 41.7 is obviously, you know, they have that, they have that ability. Hugo's Hugo's doing it off of a uh, 0.3 reaction time. Clearly, he wasn't uh, he wasn't <laughs> in the group. He was probably working some 4 IM pace uh, while we were working on, on our reaction time. Uh, but I mean, you're, you're spot on there too. I, I think this is this is one of the things that excites me the most about about this meet. Obviously, you lose a guy like you know Hoff going 40.8. It's 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 really hard to replace that. Um, but like I had mentioned, Bjorn, like coming in, um, he, he this is for NCAAs, man. And NCAAs yeah. is the hardest meet in the world unless you're, you know, Michael Phelps in the 2008 Olympics. You know, <laughs> uh, it is unbelievably tiring. Uh, and he will now understand that. Um, and he's only going to get better uh, as we get a little, as we, you know, progress through his, his collegiate career. Uh, Destin's the same way. And, and the thing about Destin is that he goes a 41.7 swimming the way that like a 200 freestyler swims. He oh, doesn't yeah. even have a true like sprint stroke. You look at you look at Hoff and you look at Bjorn and you're like, dude, th- these guys are s- super connected. It's a really um, it, it is a very energy intensive stroke, uh, but it's it's faster. Uh, so Destin is going to inevitably you know, work on that, I'm sure. Uh, and, and we're going to see some, some fantastic, uh, hundred free splits out of that guy. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to ask quickly about, uh, Bjorn. He's not, he's like 21 or he's a little older, right? For a freshman or am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is old for a freshman. So, uh, Sweden actually has an extra year of high school. Um, so he did only finish his high school like a year when he was 19, I think. I, I don't know exactly how, how that worked, but he didn't take like, you know, this massive uh, amount of time between finishing high school and gun coming to Cal. He just came straight here. Right. Cool. Yeah. I mean, he had a, a an, an amazing first uh, NCAAs, as you said. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So Florida got second in this relay. Louisville got third. Texas was fourth and they, all they had to do was have safe starts. And I just wanted to read off their reaction times because I think it's hilarious because they were just going for the win. So Danny Kruger let off 41 seven with a 0.75 reaction time off the, off the jump, which is whatever that, and then Chris Staka going second 0.51. So he was just chilling there. <laughs> and then Jake Santa was 0.38 and then Kibler was the, the, I guess the scariest start with a 0.2. So they were playing it real safe to, uh, to secure the win there. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's a, it's, <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand. I understand that. Can we talk quickly about Kieran Smith's versatility, though? Oh, uh, my gosh. Because the guy is, again, reaction time of 0.35 uh, and firing off a 41-2 split. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, uh, that, that's, that's something pretty impressive. And, and, he, and he, he makes as little splash as anybody. I mean, it's always really smooth and pretty to watch, you know, like he's doing a 200 or a 500. It's just, Oh yeah. I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree. 
And you know who actually really impressed me was watching uh, Drew Kibler's uh, 500 free prelims too. I had just never seen people go, you know, 21s and 22s. <laughs> just one beat kicking it looking like you're warming up yeah. yeah that's the craziest thing about the 500s to me is these guys that that are going out you know 47 like jake mcgahey or drew or trenton julian was out 46 2 to go his 409 or whatever but it just looks so easy though for them mm -hmm. it's, amazing. it's awesome amazing it's awesome well and again it's you can't help but wonder do these things translate to something good long course at the trials to benefit Team USA in Tokyo. So speaking of Tokyo, Nathan, just give us a little recap of where you're at in your training now and what how you're feeling. I'm feeling good, man. Um, I'm 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 lifting nice and heavy. We just we got done a uh, a good uh, hundred free back end speed work today. Um, we're going down to Mission Viejo. Um, and that is that's coming up here in just a couple of weeks, and then we have um, Indy uh, a couple of weeks after that, and then it's basically like start taper time, which is crazy. Yeah, it's here, it's here. We're fine tuning. So, well, I just I can't wait for next year when we can be at the stands at NCAA's and cheer on another Bears, epic dude. battle <laughs> <laughs> between the Bears and the Horns and everyone else. NC State's going to be interesting next year, I believe. With their incredible, oh, they have this monster class coming in. I totally forgot about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's going to be good to finally be in person next year. But uh, it was good, good online action for us to enjoy, and so glad they had a meet. So, so Noah, any other closing thoughts before we say bye to Nathan? Well, just as you were mentioning uh, NCAA's next year, I wanted to just kind of talk about it real quick. But how is the you know obviously all the seniors can have another year? Do like Josh, have you heard anything? I don't know if you like about the Texas guys, any of their seniors coming back, or Nathan, have you heard anything about the Cal seniors coming back? Is that something that these guys are actually wanting to do? Or do you think most people are ready to, like you say, go pro or go ISL or go, you know, just move on? Man, yeah, go ahead, Nathan. I, I, I haven't heard anything. Go ahead. Yeah, your guess is honestly as good as mine here. Um, I mean, I, I think some guys maybe they're motivated to do it after after you know getting second NCs. Um, or, you know, this summer is obviously a, a big thing too. A lot of people like to call it after going, you know, senior year, Olympic trials, and then calling it. So right. I think there's just going to be a, a variety of things that happen. That makes sense. I would imagine having to go back to mainly the school part of it for a lot of these guys where they can go pro and make money and get sponsorships and things like that, or, you know, start these nice jobs. I'm sure that that would be a more attractive option for a lot of them. Yeah. The ISL sure is fun. I mean, it's, it's got the NC2A feel you get on teams and you're sh racing short course meters. And on top of that, you get prize money. So it's got the best of NC2As plus money. So it's, it is tempting. Um, Nathan, thank you for what you do for team USA. Thank you for what you did for Berkeley all those years. And thank you for loving on the kids. And when we get to do clinics together, I'm excited to get some clinics going with you after Tokyo and you can Absolutely. <laughs> you can uh, get more diaper money for that beautiful baby of y'all's. And uh, so anyway, uh, any other closing thoughts, guys? I don't have That's any. That's it. I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being you, Josh. Man, you're one of the <laughs> you're one of the most awesome guys uh, to to have in the sport, and we, we are very grateful for you and your efforts to grow it. And looking forward to to joining you on the other side one of these days. Well, Nathan, thank you so much. And Noah, thank you for all you do. I just want to close by saying congratulations to Eddie Reese on his 15th national title. That really sets him apart as one of the greatest coaches of all time and one of the most dominant sports teams of all time. So hard to uh, overstate that, how special that is. And um, it looks like they got a lot of guys coming back for next year and maybe possibly number 16 next year, which is just crazy, crazy to think about. So thanks again for enjoying the show with us, and we can't wait to see you guys around the pool soon. So in the meantime, keep smiling and keep streamlining. For Noah Yanchulis and Nathan Adrian, I'm Josh Davis. Bye-bye, everybody.